Okay, so in this video, uh, we're going to go through the unwrapping of the UVWs of our table. Um, if you haven't got this far with uh, modeling the table, I do have a previous video that would show you how do you set up your 2D planes and uh, model the table from that. Now, this is a relatively simple model, so the UV process will be pretty easy on it. Um, but you'll probably realize throughout this that if you have a more complex model, uh, the UVW process uh, or the unwrapping process is going to be a lot harder, a lot more tedious. So once I've got my table selected or completed, I'm just going to delete these planes because I, I no longer need them. I'm going to select my table and I'm going to make sure I'm in modifiers list and I'm just going to hit U and I'm going to get to my UV or unwrap UVW. Now, I've noticed that there is a bug within 3ds Max that if you do apply this modifier, sometimes um, it doesn't tech to the model and you'll not get any of these green lines. These are seam lines. And when you open up your UV editor here, uh, you'll not have any UVs present at all. If that happens, just select that modifier, uh, click on the remove modifier icon, click on your create tab, click off your object, back on your object, back and modify into the modifier list and just reapply that unwrap UVW modifier. It should work then. So since this is a relatively um, kind of boxy type model, I'll not have to use anything really other than planar mapping. Um, I'll not have to use cylindrical, I'll not have to use spherical, and I'm not going to use box mapping either. Um, I'm going to open up my UV editor. So this here is basically the editor where I can see my UVs. Now what UVs are, are basically 2D coordinates of our 3D model. Because we have to take our 3D model um, and texture it, uh, and our textures are 2D, uh, the best way to do that is to kind of lay out our 3D model in a 2D plane. Uh, so then we can take that template into Photoshop uh, and then use that template uh, as uh, a texture or for us to create our textures. Um, we can do that by using this unwrap UVW to make specific uh, templates for specific models. We do have different projection types over here. Um, so if we have a flat surface, we could use planar mapping. If we have a cylindrical surface like a barrel or something like that, we can use cylindrical mapping on that. If we have a spherical uh, type surface, we can use spherical mapping on that. And then if we have kind of like a box, we can use this kind of automatic box mapping. Uh, but generally, I try and stay away from that. We also have down here uh, this quick planar map, which we're probably using quite a bit today. And then there's a few other um, tools that we can use in this menu as well. So the first thing that I always do is um, I use uh, polygon selection mode when I'm working with this. So I like to select my polygons rather than my edges or my vertices. Um, so the first part that I'm going to do is the top of my table. Now since we're using planar map and we have to make sure that whatever we're selecting is on the same plane. So if I'm looking down on this I can see in the middle is my Z plane. So everything in here is in that plane. If I'm looking down here, you can see that we're looking now in the X plane. So everything here would be in the X plane. What I mean by that is I wouldn't start selecting anything in a different plane. So this side of the leg that I haven't selected, okay, which is in the Y plane, you can see now that my preview for my projection, this yellow box, has kind of tilted slightly because it's taken an average of uh, all the polygons that I've selected. And since this is in the Y plane and the rest of the polygons are in the X plane, it's kind of tilted it around to kind of take that into account. So if you're ever using planar mapping or you think you're going to be using planar mapping and you notice that this yellow box is kind of slightly tilted, it means that you may have a polygon that you don't want selected. So another tool that is handy is this grow and uh, shrink tool. So instead of having me to select around all these polygons, I basically select the middle one and I click on the grow 
it'll grow from that middle and it'll select all the polygons that that is in contact with. If I select this minus one, it'll deselect okay, and go back to its original form. Also we have here is ignore bag facing. That's quite handy to have on. Basically what that means is you can't really select anything that the camera doesn't see. So if I select all these here, you'll notice that I'm not selecting anything that the camera couldn't see there, so I'm not selecting any of the back faces. Again, if I select here, or looking down, it shouldn't select anything underneath. You can turn that off if you want. So I'm going to go and start by my, or start on the top of the table and click my grow. I can come over here and use the planar map. Uh, what you'll notice is, first of all, when I use that, um, it hasn't kept the proportions correctly. Um, I can turn this normalized map off. It'll be absolutely massive, but it has uh, kept the proportions. What I like to use when I'm using um, planar mapping is the quick planar tool down here. What that does is it resizes it so it's in proportion to what your 3D model is like, but it also doesn't make it absolutely massive where you have to scale it down. Um, whenever you're using one of these tools as well and you have it selected, you can't move or select anything in your UV editor until you have this here tool unselected again. Whereas the quick planar map, if you select that, it knocks itself off so you can move things over. So whenever I unwrap something like the top of this table, I just move it outside my checker box. I can actually click here on my checker pattern again, and that checker pattern will um, go onto my table. So I can basically see if I'm stretching anything. That's one of the things that you don't want to do with UV. You don't want to start um, stretching. If I start stretching this here, you'll see that my squares, or they were squares, have turned into triangles. So Basically what I've done is I've started to stretch out my UV, which is kind of shrinking in uh, my texture, which is something you really do not want to do. So I'm just going to move this out here somewhere, um, and then I'm going to start on the side of my table. So again, I'm just going to select whatever I think is on the same plane. Um, I do understand that these here back of the legs are in the same plane and this other side is also in the same plane but i don't want to have any overlapping uvs if i have overlapping uvs here um it means that whenever i come to texture the front and this other side of the table will have exactly the same texture on them now you can do that if you wanted to conserve space because if you're conserving space here you can get more detail into it but again um it's not going to be unique detail so there's a bit of a trade-off so I'm going to just planar map that, then I'm going to do my other side. And quickly planar map that. And I'm going to do the bottom now. So I can take these, uh, the base of the legs along with this because again they are on the same plane. And that should be everything selected there. And so all that's left is the insides of these legs, which I'm going to have to do individually. So you can see already, although this is a simple enough model, um, if you had a really detailed model, it would take you quite some time to get this unwrapped. It's a big process, <clears throat> and it's something that you should keep in mind, especially when you're modeling, uh, that you're not putting any unnecessary edges in there, you're not adding any unnecessary detail or anything like that.
So uh, when I feel that I'm finished uh, UVing and I think I've covered every aspect of the 3D model, what I usually do is I just draw a marquee over this box just to make sure that I haven't missed anything and it looks like I haven't. So now that we've got everything unwrapped, what we want to do is pack it all together inside this here checkered box. Now we want to do so that uh, everything's kind of in proportion to itself. We don't want in this in instance to um, have, for instance, like the top of the table like uh, taking up more area than the bottom. You can do that, especially if you're doing character model. You might uh, want to dedicate more space to like the face uh, rather than like you know the feet or something like that. But in this instance, we're just going to try and keep everything in proportion. Now, there's an easy way to do that. If I select everything, I can click this Pack Custom, and that will pack everything in there. Now, one of the problems with that is it starts to kind of unravel what I've unwrapped. So you can see that the base of the feet here have been uh, kind of separated from the bottom. Um, but there's a way around that. Basically, what we want to do is we want to select these kind of islands that we've made, or these shells, and we want to group them together. So if I group those together, and group those together, group those together, and do the same for the rest of these islands. And with this here one, I might just go on and rotate it, and turn off my snap rotate. Just make sure that's grouped. So uh, when we've got all these slides, I don't need to group these. Once we have these kind of shells grouped together, I can now select them all again and pack custom. And you can see that it's packed them in there fairly tightly. Um, and it means all these different um, shells are taken up like the maximum allotted space. And we could probably see here that you know that our squares are all the same size as well in this checkerboard texture. Uh, if they're all the same size, it means that uh, each part of the table is taking up the same amount of texture space in the UV, which is kind of what we wanted uh, for this instance. So once we're happy with that, all we have to do is go to Tools and Render UV Template. So this is where you kind of decide what size our template is going to be. So you might want to go for 1024 or something like 2048 for a table. Um, you can also show any overlaps, okay? So any uh, UVs that are overlapping, if you don't want that, you can click show overlaps and when it renders out, uh, it will display in red. And then you can kind of choose what visibility you want in the edges, like seams you maybe want green, that type of thing. Um, it's up to you. And then you render out UV template. Uh, once that's done, um, you just click on save. You might want to check over it just to make sure it's okay. Uh, you can just click on save then. And you could save it as a PNG. I like to do a PNG because it's kind of more versatile when you bring it into Photoshop. It has an alpha channel where it's black here. Uh, so it means that this is going to be all transparent. Um, and I think it works better with the layer setup in Photoshop. So I'm going to choose table underscore uv.png as my name. Uh, it's good to use a naming convention. Um, keeps everything tidy and if you're ever passing any work over it means that other person will have a relatively good idea of what that file is. Um, and then save as type png. I'm just going to save it. And when I'm doing this I'm just going to make sure I've got my alpha channel ticked. RGB 24 bit is fine for that as well. Press OK. And that saves out into that folder. So that's how you basically unwrap um, a simple object like a table or a box or something like that.